we're going to go over a method for generating ambient occlusion for our foliage. Ambient occlusion has to be handled a little bit differently because our foliage volume is made up of planes. And so we have to use a special method for generating ambient occlusion that we wouldn't normally use on other objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the plan for how this is going to work. And then we're going to jump into the shader and we're going to implement that plan. And then I'm going to show you three different ways that you can apply the data that we're going to generate to your shader. Okay, so first let's talk about the plan. Here we have a foliage volume and it's made up of a whole bunch of random planes that are facing different directions. And so what we need to do is figure out a way of generating ambient occlusion that will be nice and uniform and smooth. And really what we want is to make the tree darker in the center and then lighter as we move out toward the edges of the leaves. If you think about how a tree works in the light, um, as you move in toward the center of the volume of foliage, uh, you get darker because less and less light can penetrate through all of the different leaves that are facing all different directions. And so we need to figure out a method to make the tree look darker in the center and then lighter out toward the edges of the leaves. Well, we have two pieces of information that can help us with that. And we talked about this a little bit last week when we were talking about normals. Do you remember how we subtracted the object position from the pixel world space position? One of the normal methods that we talked about was using that. So if we create our foliage volume so that the center of the foliage, so that the pivot point or the origin of the foliage is in the middle, then if we subtract that object position from the pixel position, we get a vector that goes from the pixel to the origin or, or the other direction. It goes from the origin, from the center of the foliage out to the pixel. And then if we take that measure, if we take that vector and we measure the length of it, we can get an idea about how far away from the center we are. If we're right in the center, we can give that value a black value. And if we're more out toward the edge, we can give it a white value. So that's the method that we're going to use. So let's jump over to the shader and I will show you how to implement that. Okay, here's what I was talking about. Last week we had the absolute world position subtracted from the object position. And what this does is it gives us a vector that extends from the origin of the vegetation, which in our case happens to be in the center. And by the way, that is a requirement for this method. You need to make sure that you put your pivot point for the vegetation right where you want the darkest point of the ambient occlusion to be. So if I subtract the object position from the world position, it gives me a vector that goes from that pivot point out to the current pixel that we're rendering. And then what we need to do is add a vector length node. And this is gonna measure the length of the vector so we can find out how far is it from the origin to uh, the outer edge. The shorter that vector is, the darker the ambient occlusion we want it to be because it means that we're in the center. Um, but if we measure the length and we find out that that vector is actually pretty long, then we want our ambient occlusion value to be white. And so we can take this length and divide it by the maximum length that we want to use. And in our case, I happen to know that I want to use five meters as my distance. So if we go back here and look at our tree, when we're right in the center, we want it to be dark. But once we get to a distance of five meters away from the center, that's where we want it to be white. And so since Unreal uses centimeters as units, I'm going to add a constant and give it a value of 500. So this is 500 centimeters. So what this means is once we get 500 centimeters from the center of the vegetation, we want a white value. 
And so I'm just going to saturate this. And let's take a look at what we get. Just for temporary debugging purposes, I'm going to wire this value into our specular component. And then I'm going to save it and we're going to switch over to look at the tree. And we're going to look at the specular mask. So I'm going to switch the lit menu here to buffer visualizations and I'm going to pick the specular value. Okay, so now you can see that we're starting to get something sort of like what we want. Uh, you can see that our values are sort of white around the edges and in toward the center of our volume, uh, we're getting kind of a dark value. So that's pretty cool, but I think that we need it actually to be uh, a little bit more contrasty. Like we want it to be a little bit darker in that middle area. And so we're going to use a power node to adjust our contrast. So I'm going to add a pow. And then we're going to give this power node like a value of like three, for example, and I'll wire that into the specular. Okay, now you can see that our increase of contrast has worked and we have a nice dark center of our tree and we have brighter tips and edges of the leaves out toward the edges of the foliage. And this is nice because it kind of shows off the fact that around the edges, uh, the sun is lighting the leaves completely, but in the center, uh, the leaves are shadowing and so it's, it's a bit darker. So this is what I was talking about when I said foliage ambient occlusion. That's a pretty cool effect. Okay, so we've basically got the functionality of our shader. If I switch back here, uh, you can expose this value here, uh, which is the distance from the center where you want the ambient occlusion to become completely white. And you can also expose this power value here, which gives you kind of a contrast control over the ambient occlusion. So if you were making a material instance, you could expose these two values here uh, as parameters for the end user to set. Okay, so now we're on to the third step, which is how do we actually use this? Uh, well, we've already got one of the uses here. We've wired it into the specular value, uh, but we do need to change one thing. And that is um, by default, all objects or <laughs> I would say the vast majority of objects have a specular value of 0.5. So usually we don't connect anything to the specular pin because we can just use the default of 0.5 and leave it at that. But what we've done here is wired this value in and we've got values that go all the way up to one, which is much brighter specular than we actually should have. So in order to fix that, we need to take our ambient occlusion value and multiply it by 0.5. And what this is gonna do is prevent our ambient occlusion value from ever going over 0.5. And so the brightest values will actually be uh, more realistic specular values for our vegetation. So I'm gonna save this and let's take a look at the result. All right, so changing our specular value there's not a whole lot of difference. Uh, it's kind of hard to notice, and I would actually have to switch back and forth, turning it on and off for you to actually be able to tell uh, what that's doing. But let's make two more changes that are a little bit more visible. The first one that we're gonna make is to our subsurface scattering color or our translucency on the leaves. Uh, just like, um, the tree should be getting darker toward the center. It should also be less translucent because there's more um, leaves in the way of that translucency and less of the sun shining all the way through to the center of the tree. So here's my subsurface color. And this is actually a really easy change to make. All I need to do is take my ambient occlusion value and multiply it by my subsurface color. and then I can wire the result of this multiply into subsurface. Let's save that and take a look at what we get. All right, so I'm just gonna fly around here to the backside of the tree and we're gonna take a look at the sun from this perspective. And you can see that I'm getting a significantly less translucency right here in the middle 
where I've multiplied our subsurface color. So you can see our subsurface color shining through on the edges all around the outside of the tree, but here in the middle, it's, it's a bit darker. And that's the effect that we're looking for. It's pretty cool. It makes our tree look just that much more realistic. All right, there's one more way that we can use our ambient occlusion, and that is to actually use it as ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna take our ambient occlusion value that we computed here and just wire it right here into our ambient occlusion socket. Let's take a look at that result. All right, so now you can see that with our ambient occlusion wired into the ambient occlusion root socket, that's made a significant impact on our tree. It's quite a bit darker there in the middle and still nice and bright right around the edges. So you can see uh, with our final result here, we've made a really big difference in moving our tree toward more realistic lighting. And what we did is we cast a ray from the origin or from the pivot point of the foliage out to each individual pixel. We measured the distance of that ray and then we divided by our maximum distance uh, to get a value between zero and one where zero is the center and one is uh, the maximum distance. And then we use that value as our specular, as a multiplier for our translucency color, and also for our ambient occlusion value. And I think this result really helps the tree feel more volumetric. Whereas before when it was nice and uh, kind of flat looking, uh, now it feels a lot more uh, three-dimensional and like it has some nice depth to it. Anyway, so that's our tutorial for today. Last week I promised that today we would do uh, a tutorial on uh, fading out the foliage as we got close to it. And so I'm actually going to save that tutorial for next week. So next week we're going to have a tutorial on uh, fading out the foliage when you get too close so that you don't end up slicing through the planes and also so that it just it looks nicer when you're up close. All right, so stick around next week for that one. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, be sure to give it a like. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer those in the comments. Uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week.